start off our show tonight with the biggest news coming in from Russia. The country's state media has reported that Alexei Navalny is dead. That's right. The most outspoken domestic critic of the Russian president, Radhami Putin, is no more. He breathed his last in a jail in Kharp, where he was serving a long sentence. The federal prison service saying that Navalny collapsed and lost consciousness after taking a walk. It further claims the medical staff arrived immediately and an ambulance team was also called. Apparently, all necessary measures were taken, but the doctor soon declared him dead. He was only 47 years old. What exactly is the Kremlin saying? It claims that it had no information on the cause of Navalny's death and that it is for the doctors to find out. However, Navalny's press secretary, Kira Yarmish, is saying that his team had not been informed of his death. Navalny's lawyers have now flown to his prison colony in Kharp. Just 48 hours ago, Navalny tweeted this on the platform X, formerly Twitter. He spoke of spending 15 days in a punishment cell, that too for the fourth time in less than two months. And reports are also saying that he managed to put out a post on his Telegram channel. It was a tribute to his wife, Yulia. Both the posts were made two days ago. That's on Valentine's Day. And now the Russian activist is no more. Soon after getting the news, his wife spoke at the Munich Security Conference. She was welcomed with a long-standing ovation. Listen to this. You've probably all seen the terrible news coming in today. I thought for a long time whether I should come out here or fly straight to my children. But then I thought about what Alexei would do in my place. And I'm sure he'd be here. He'd be on this stage. But if this is true, I want Putin and all of his entourage, Putin's friends and his government, to know that they will all be held accountable for what they have done to our country, to my family and to my husband. And that day will come very soon. And I want to call on the entire world community, everyone in this room and people around the world, that we come together to unite and defeat this evil, defeat the horrific regime that is now in Russia. And with me on the broadcast is someone who can better help us understand uh, these uh, developments. Uh, thanks very much for being here on the broadcast, uh, Fred. Uh, who is a journalist and political commentator with us from Moscow. Um, let me just begin by asking you for your initial reaction to the news of Alexei Navalny's death and what do you think really happened? Well, of course, I was shocked. Um, it was shaping up to be a quiet day. I was going to shovel snow because we've had tons of it lately and uh, suddenly this happened and uh, it is characteristic, you know, of um, the Navalny story that unexpected things happen to him. Um, uh, he is, he has been uh, dealt with, as it were, by the Russian uh, state machinery. Uh, you know, put in prison after court cases and and charges. He was excluded from the ballot. I mean, all these are predictable things that a, 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 a repressive state does with its challengers. Uh, but then these uh, bizarre things happened to him, his poisoning in 2020 by Novichok. And, and now this, th these are not scripted types of repression. Um, they're not convenient for Putin, uh, I shouldn't think, because uh, they make him look bad. Uh, they, I mean, <laughs> he can look bad anyway, but these look, make uh, Russia look unpredictable in cruel ways, um, uh, ungoverned in ways that don't benefit Putin. And that is... Uh, <clears throat> You know, part of the Navalny story, the the this ragged edge uh, to his political career that that uh, got him into these weird weird situations, and now this untimely death. Um, it it is it is just beyond. Uh, you know, I don't know what to say about it, but it definitely focuses minds and and uh, creates an enormous amount of discussion about the nature of Putin's Russia. 
And what do you make of the uh, reaction uh, that's come in from the Kremlin so far? Well, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that they were blindsided by it. I don't think that Putin ordered Navalny's death or, or something as simple as that. Something much more complicated goes on, and that's the scary thing about uh, Russia today. You know, these unexplained deaths and, and from Putin's point of view, unnecessary murders and, uh, and, um, and, and, and this death. Um, these things are, are simply inexplicable, in, even in terms of, uh, you know, authoritarian repressive state dealing with I I people who are in opposition to it. Um, this makes no sense. And so I, I, I'm guessing that, that the Kremlin's reaction was much like mine, confused and baffled, and, and they probably want to get to the bottom of it. But there, there is no uh, avoiding the fact that um, whatever happened, uh, Vladimir Putin owns it. He is president of this country, and um, he does set the, the stage and, and the framework within which things happen. And so he's going to have to answer at some point about this. So a lot of question marks. Um, uh, certainly, um, as you're pointing out, Fred, but do you see any of those answers emerging anytime soon well i'm guessing there will be an ex uh, an explanation coming forward um i mean there is a there is an investigation an official investigation underway as we speak um and they will deliver some sort of uh, um perhaps even very detailed explanation about what happened but i'm guessing uh most people won't believe it um, and that this this mystery about Alexei Navalny's death, as so many things in his life, will will remain, and they will remain as nagging doubts and worries um, about the 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 nature of of power in Russia. We also heard from uh, Alexei Navalny's wife just a short while after that news came out. Uh, what was your reaction to what she said and also the fact that she spoke out uh, just hours after the news emerged? Well, um, I, I think that in, in the family circles and supporters of Navalny, they still uh, are disbelieving uh, of, of this news. It, it is rather, it is sudden and unexpected and, and he was, by all accounts, a relatively healthy and relatively young man. Uh, so it, you you have every reason to be suspicious, um, but I guess it's sinking in. She seemed, uh, I mean, from what she said at the Munich Security Co Conference, she seemed to believe it, uh, and did the political thing. She, as she said, what her what her husband would have done, uh, to step up and and um, and say her piece. So um, it's it's not a surprise, um, and uh, I think everybody uh, has to admire her courage and her guts, and and feel sorry for the family in the first place. That this can't be an easy thing, and also for many Navalny supporters, many of whom I know personally, uh, they they really thought he was um, a great man, uh, a, a courageous, honest, steadfast person, who didn't ever. Uh, shy away from a from a confrontation, that's what got him where he he was and, and now is. Um, but it also means his his legend, I guess, w will continue. We're leaving it there for the moment, Fred. Thanks very much for being here on the broadcast. Thank you. Navalny had for long been a thorn for the Kremlin. He started out as a lawyer, but soon became Russia's most prominent opposition leader. He carried out corruption exposes, campaigned against the ruling United Russia Party, and led some of the biggest anti-government protests that have been seen in Russia. 
when demonstrations against Putin flared in December 2011 after an election embroiled in fraud accusations, Navalny was one of the first protest leaders arrested. He brought out tens of thousands of Russians to the streets despite Russia's harsh anti-protest laws. It was Navalny who investigated Putin's inner circle and shared the findings in slick videos on YouTube garnering hundreds of millions of views. In fact, in the year 2020, Navalny fell into a coma after being poisoned in Siberia. He was too ill to be moved, but later doctors cleared him to fly. Navalny was on a flight from Siberia to Russia with his wife when his health rapidly worsened, but the pilot made an emergency landing and saved his life. And soon Navalny was flown to Berlin for treatment. It was found out that he had been poisoned by Novichok, a neurotoxin developed in the Soviet era. The Kremlin once again denied involvement. A joint media investigation revealed a team of assassins from Russia's FSB security service behind the poisoning. But Putin dismissed it, saying if someone had wanted to poison him, they would have finished him off, quote unquote. However, Navalny recovered and he decided to return to Russia in January 2021. He was lauded for his bravery, but it was only a matter of time before he landed into the Kremlin's clutches once again. Upon his return, Navalny was swiftly arrested and sentenced to his first of several jail terms. He was handed 11 and a half years in jail for fraud and extremism. And last year, his sentence was further extended by 19 years. He faced six counts, including inciting and financing extremism, creating an illegal NGO, the rehabilitation of Nazism, and inciting children to dangerous acts. He rejected the charges as being politically motivated. Navalny was ordered to be jailed in a special prison regime. It limited his ability basically to meet the visitors or write or receive letters for years. He had limited contact with the outer world. Navalny's fate had been doomed. Last year in December, he disappeared from the Vladimir region of central Russia where he was serving his jail term at the time. His lawyer or his team could not contact him for a better part of the month. Even the UN raised concern over violations of human rights. After nearly three weeks of lost contact, Navalny was located at a prison colony in Krap near the Arctic Circle. The region is notorious for long and severe winters. It's almost impossible to get to this penal colony or to even send letters there. Navalny's strategist said that this was the highest possible level of isolation from the world and now not even two months had gone by that Navalny has been reported dead. The pattern seems to continue. In today's Russia, one cannot afford to be on President Putin's bad side. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.